In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a new learning module from scratch. It's a very specific type of assignment, um, and it gives you a lot more freedom than the normal web-based homework assignment. So I'm not going to, it's, this video won't go over all the settings you can change, that would take way too long, but I will give you an idea and encourage you to play with it on your own. So let's go into our class. So I've created a class already. I've actually already have one web-based assignment. I'm going to create a new learning module assignment. And the way I do that is I click on new assignment, like I'm creating a new assignment. I'm going to do learning module one. Now when I go down on the assignment type, I need to select a learning module style. And I have one learning module style right now in my grading scheme, so I'm allowed to choose from, well, really just that one if I want to do a learning module. And you'll notice that all things kind of flipped around. The templates that I'm able to see are a little bit different. Similar to normal homework assignments, you can find either a shared learning module or you can find it by a course. This is the standard one that most people use. Uh, there's not a lot of shared learning modules that are out there, but you're, you're more than welcome to look through them and see if anyone has it. Again, start dates, stop dates, solutions, available dates are all the same as a normal homework assignment with one exception. The solution date, which we said in the previous video on how to create a normal assignment, has to be after the due date. For learning modules, the solution date can actually be before the due date. For instance, I'm going to have on the 9th of January at 10 a.m. I'm going to have this assignment start. I'm going to have it due a week later on the 16th, but I'm going to allow the solutions to be available starting as soon as the assignment starts. That seems a little bit weird, but the style of a learning module is a little bit different, so this is, you know, can be a useful uh, approach for setting dates. And the main approach that I'm thinking of right now is that if you do a flipped class and you want to do pre-lecture, pre-class uh, learning activities where they would be able to go through, maybe see some content, see some questions, some checkpoint questions, and you want to give them immediate feedback on those questions, you can do it using a learning module. It also works really great for a review assignment before an exam, and that way your students can go through. They don't have to wait until the solution date to see why they got questions right or wrong and how to do them correctly. They could get it right away. So two good examples for setting solution dates available and using learning modules. But as I said, the main point of a learning module is because you can deliver both questions and content to your students, kind of in a PowerPoint sort of way. Uh, points per question defaults to 10. The, you have the ability to override participation credit. The style of layout, uh, when you get into it, you can choose how the questions are actually displayed. You give three options, side by side, um, over, under, and kind of a unique one where that I think is really good for doing graphs. Passing percentage will tell you there's a, the final slide that we'll get to uh, will trigger off of this value. If you want to do a timed assessment, from when they get into the assignment, they'll have a certain amount of time. So maybe you give them a week on assignment, but you only want to have them, you only want to give them one hour anywhere within the week they can try it, but they only get one hour time sort of sort of deal. Uh, this can get a little bit tricky, especially if your internet connection at your school sometimes is not the greatest and people are using a variety of different um, computers. This sometimes can cause some problems, so it's it's a used feature, but not that great. Uh, slide navigation, do you force them to attempt questions? Uh, most people don't. Let them go forward and back as they want to. You can share it, and again, you can give an overview to it. Test mode uh, is another kind of option like the time limit. Test mode will not will actually hide if they get the question right or wrong. It'll give them one try. It won't show them solutions until the due date is passed or until they've completed their, their assignment. I can't remember exactly the details, but it doesn't allow for retry. So if you actually wanted to do an assessment uh, in class in a computer lab, you might want to try this um, 
her way. So enough of that. Yes, I know that the solution date occurs before the due date. I'm okay with this. I'm creating the assignment. And unlike a normal homework assignment where your list of questions come up with zero, technically I don't have any questions, but I come up with two slides. I come up with an introduction slide and a results slide. The introduction slide, I'm going to look at the editing view of an introduction slide, and you'll see that it's a, it has a, t a place for a title. I'm going to call this Learning Module 1 by Nathan. So I can put in text. There's a whole little palette here of things that I want to do. If I wanted to put in equations, this is why a learning module is ability or has the ability to deliver content. You can put in stuff. We try to make the interface relatively easy, similar to writing a Gmail email type of thing. Um, if I wanted to see what my work is, I can save and preview, and it'll actually see what the view is for the students. If I want to go back and edit this, say I didn't like how this looked, I wanted to put an extra space here, maybe I didn't want everything centered, I can click on the edit button and go back to the same page. However, I'm okay with this. I want to actually go back to the learning module view. So up in the corner up here, I have these breadcrumbs and I can go back to the learning module. And these breadcrumbs exist all over, so you may already be using them, but it's really nice to use them in learning module. If I wanted to see the preview of the whole assignment uh, where I just was, I can click on the preview slides or preview slides. Works pretty well. All right, so I have my introduction slide. Now I want to create another slide. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the button, and I probably should have explained that. I'm going to hit a button over here that's add slide. And I actually have two options. I can add a content slide or I can add a question slide. So I'm going to add a content slide, and you'll see I get a spot for in here for content, and I get to title my slide. So I'm going to title this topic topic one. My stuff goes here. Can't. You can read more on the following web page, www.google.com. So the palette that we have available to you, or the different functions you have, this is really writing HTML code with a nice little interface. If, if you like writing HTML code, there's a little button to bring you into the editor of it. If you don't know what I'm talking about or don't want to deal with that, you can use these little uh, features over here to try to move things around, increase font sizes, so think of it as a little bit of a word processor. I'm going to put a link in here, and that link is actually, I'm going to copy this first because that's the link that I want. My link is going to go to Google itself, and I actually want to open it in a new window when that happens. Um, And it asks me, do I want to add in the normal prefix? The answer is yes, that would be lovely. If I wanted to, I can add, say, a picture. If I want to go in, I can bring up a little file manager, upload a picture. That was pretty quick again, so let me go back through. One of the little buttons here is add a picture, insert an image. One of them is insert a file, and one of them is insert a video. So if I wanted to insert an image into this, I click on it. It asks me where the image location is. Maybe it's stored on my computer. If it's stored on my computer, I click on the little browse. Uh, it's actually asking me where did I store it in Quest. I haven't stored any pictures, so I can go in and upload a file here. It'll come up onto the preview can click it in there. As I said, there's a lot of options you can do and I encourage you to play around with them. Um, similar, you can put files in here. So if you want to download an Excel spreadsheet for them to play with and then answer some questions on, you can do it all in, in here. So for sake of time, I'm going to save this as it is. I think it's a great, great feature. 
I saved it so I can actually go in and preview it. So similar to when I saved and previewed before, it'll see you'll see that my slide two. So I have my introduction to slide one, my topic one, my title over here, is slide two. Uh, this little bar will not show up for your students. It has all the text that I wrote. If I click on the Google one, it'll actually bring me to Google on a different page. This is exactly what I was hoping for. If I click next slide, it'll tell me that I got to the results slide, the last slide. Well, that's not exactly what I wanted. I didn't want to go to this last page. I wanted to actually ask a question first. So in between the introduction topic one and then before I get to results, I want to ask a question. So I'm going to add a question in on this slide. So it's going to take a little while to load the question list. Uh, it's very similar to what you saw when you were creating uh, new quest or when you're adding questions to normal assignments. So I'm again, let me go in and let's go into the math bank. I'm going to do a geometry question. And oh, I don't know. Let's see what's in nets of solids. I have no idea what these questions look like. There's two of them there. That's great. Let's actually add both of them. So I'm going to click both of them and you'll see that I have my introduction slide, my topic one, and then I have question, the next, the first question I added and the second question I added. So I'm done adding and you'll notice that I added two new slides. And maybe I don't like the order of the slide, so I'm going to click on the slide and I'm going to reorder it. So I changed around slide three and slide four. And you'll notice that now I go to topic one, then I go to the second question, and then finally the first question that I added. So if I click on this, I go into a very similar view where I have a nice little box up at the top. Yours might be a different size, but nice little box up at the top where I can put in text. So give a shot at this question. So I can put a little note in there, maybe I give a hint to the student, maybe I put a lot of text in there first, and then I will get to the question afterwards. And there's a lot of things that you can do in these questions. So I can actually branch the learning module into different ways depending if they get the questions right or wrong. Again, I can change the way that the question appears. If I have a, two questions that I found and I wanted to allow the students to try a second one identical, I could add another question in, can change the point values, make them extra credit, withdraw questions, and do a lot of stuff in here. Um, I'm going to type in question one, so it's now going to be labeled question one so the students know that, and I'm going to do a preview of this. And now I actually get to see the question that I added. It was a nice multiple choice question. So which net results, what's the best picture for this? Um, all right, I don't like how the question is being displayed, where I get one question here and I get the choices over there. I, I can do better. So I'm going to go in here, and I'm going to actually choose the third one because I think this is a good candidate for it. I'm going to save and preview. And you'll see now I get the same question, but now my parts below. I, it, this is a much nicer way to see the question and the, the possible choices that I have. So what's the right answer? It's a square base with triangular points. So question three, that's the right answer. Highlights it when I select it. I'm previewing the thing so I can submit the answer and see what it says. I got the question right and it shows me the explanation because the due date is set. So you kind of see how it works. If I go to the next question, well I haven't done anything on this question, it's still question three. But you get the idea how to add question slides in, how to add content slides in. Uh, there is some changes you can make in the results. Um, you could look through our media gallery and see if there's anything in there. But at the very end, once you have everything set and done, the last thing you need to do is publish to the class. Actually, I want to add one extra question in there. This is my favorite question if you're doing a flipped class. So this is a little, little extra for you. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to search the question by ID number. And the ID number that I remember, it's an old ID number, 110223. This is a very specific question that I wrote a while ago. Uh, I modeled it after just-in-time teaching based out of Colorado. It's called Still Confused. And it actually has a different ID number than what I typed in because there's a newer version of it. But I'm going to go ahead, add it in. Done adding it. And let's go ahead and preview this learning module, see how we're doing. So I got my title slide. Minimize this so we can see what the students are going to see. I got my title slide. I have my topic slide one. I have the first question, which takes a little bit of time to load. The second question, which I didn't edit the formatting around on. Actually, let's go ahead and edit this one right now. I'm going to use the other settings so you can actually see what all three of them look like. So I'm going back, saving and previewing again. And you'll see that I get the question and then on top of each other all the choices stack up. So instead of two column, I do one column. It's up to you. Some questions work better some other, uh, in different formats. And then the last question is, as I said, my favorite question. It says, briefly describe the one thing in this learning module that you're still confused about. Really, really nice question. It's an essay question, so you got to be careful that this question is manually graded. In Quest, you normally can't ask questions that are essay style unless you're in a learning module. And this is a nice example of things that you can do with it. It's great if you assign these uh, before class. You can get your feedback for your students and walk into class knowing exactly what your students feel like they're they're not doing so great on. So again, that ID number is 110223. Um, there's another version of it. It's called Still Confused. So all in all, that is um, that is a learning module. How to create a learning module? Like normal learning modules, you have to, or like normal assignments, you have to publish to the class before it'll be available. So it'll ask if I want to generate the student PDFs. I don't care about that. Just going to go ahead and publish it. Takes a little while to do it. We're back in our main course page, and you'll see that I have the learning module I just created with all the dates, the items on it, and it's in the process of publishing. So thank you so much for watching this video. Hopefully it answered some of your questions, and good luck in using learning modules in your class.